Hi, I'm Noah Bombard with Telegram Studio, and we're here today with Carrie Anderson. You may have seen her at uh, Nick's or playing elsewhere around uh, with The Big Lonesome, and she's joining us here today to talk to us a little bit about her music and uh, play a couple tunes for us. Carrie, welcome. Thank you. Um, your, your music is probably most defined by your really incredible voice that you have. It's just so soulful and, and gutsy. Um, you know, when you hear somebody singing like that, a lot of times it's like, you know, how do you, how do you channel that? You know, have you had such a, a horrible life experience that you're <laughs> able to channel these emotions uh, into this powerful <laughs> voice? I mean, well, I mean, my life hasn't been that horrible, but I've been through some stuff, <laughs> and yeah. uh, I feel like um, I've never really put myself in a category. But I do feel like someone from the South, like I'm, I'm not made to be born in New England or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think all the things I've been through is definitely spoken through my music and I just always felt it really strongly. It's always coming with emotion. Yeah. Now your background, you, uh, you're from here, you grew up around here, you went out to Chicago for art school mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years, you came back. How did you get into the mu music scene when you came back to the Worcester area? Well, I contacted, or a friend contacted me, I should say, my friend Dave Smith, and he was in a jam band at the time. And then I met Jeff Birch, who then I started a group with called Whalebone Farmhouse. Right, and a lot of people probably uh, have, have heard of Whalebone Farmhouse uh, locally when you guys were performing. Uh, what was the difference for you kind of leaving that, uh, that entity and forming um, you know, Carrie Anderson and The Big Lonesome, what, what's the big difference between those two bands? Well, the big difference was that I wrote a couple songs with the Whalebone Farmhouse. A lot of it was roots and traditional music that um, we've covered and made our own. Um, I feel like I just wanted to branch out and do what I wanted to do. So I feel like with big, The Big Lonesome, I, it gave me a little bit more freedom to, to sing my words, to play what I wanted to play. Yeah. And the live experience of, of performing at, at Nick's or anywhere else that you're at, um, do you, you, you seem to, uh, you know, feed off the audience a little bit, uh, you know, in terms of energy? Always. <laughs> such a projection there. Do you, does the performance change at all depending on where you're playing? I'll try to get into my inner core, you know, no matter what. But it definitely does make a difference when you have energy out there and yeah. people just giving the vibe to you because it's like, I give to you, give to me kind of um, kind of symbiosis kind of yeah. thing. So I definitely feel like having a crowd helps your energy level, especially when you play with those big soul bands or like funk or blues bands. You need a crowd, yeah. you know. Now, uh, you've, you've produced uh, one album with Big Lonesome. Uh, it's a live album from, from Nix. Uh, yeah. What was the process like putting that together? It was kind of a magical night. I, I wasn't, I didn't know how it was gonna come out. I just wanted a live recording and seeing what I could take from that to make an EP, which it's a seven song CD. Um, and so I hired Paul Buono to chart out a lot of music. And, and I, I hired a couple other players. And we just, we went for, you know, the whole night playing and developing some kind of um, connection through the music. We didn't really practice a whole lot before, so this, it was truly magical. So I took like seven songs from that night and made an album with it, and I thought it came out pretty good. And some of those songs that, that you wrote, what's the process you go through for coming up with your material? Well, I think that the time I was really writing every day and just really digging deep into sadness and maybe change and um, I was going through a divorce, I was breaking up with boyfriends and I feel like from all that pain and the biggest change when you're like in just turned 30 kind of thing. So I wanted to um, definitely show what I've written in the past couple years and kind of get that to music and yeah. I had this idea, um, and I just wanted to make it come alive. Yeah. You know? Now you're gonna you're gonna play a song for us today. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're gonna play. Well, the first song I want to play is "Love Undone," and I wrote those lyrics so long ago. And I think I was at Vincent's. I was just sitting at the bar drinking a beer, and the w my w the way my process works is I just write as much as I can all the time, and then I'll piece lyrics together. I'll save books and just go back to what I've written. And if it strikes 
the moment or if it fits in the song, the way it's developing, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. But this song kind of was developed at that bar and then years after it became a song and it was very personal to me and then when I gave it to the group, Rocky with his harmonies, it really made it come alive and so that's what's so exciting about yeah. writing alone. And it's called and it to people. Love Undone. Love Undone. Yeah, that's the first song, yeah. Okay. All right, so Carrie Anderson uh, singing Love Undone. Liberal. 